Her imaginary friend comes to life, but he kills everyone who bullies her. The episode opens with Tom and Jill, a new hey, Tom couple, and Jill. celebrating their new life in Tom's childhood home. A gift from Tom's mother over a couple of drinks and sushi. They are laughing okay. and enjoying themselves when they hear a knock from the basement, and they go to check what caused it. The basement is full of boxes containing Tom's childhood memories with Jill, as they okay. have known each other since childhood. So she's so, basically your sister. Let me stop, let me stop, let me stop. Only a little dog appears from behind what the closet the and dashes upstairs, surprising them. Tom and Jill where did he come dog, from? baffled and clueless as to where it came from and whether to keep it. Later that evening, Tom invites his friend Jason and his girlfriend to their place for dinner, where they discuss memories from the past and okay. also Jill's old drawings of a character she named Jill. No, I'm not gonna lie to you, Tom. As soon as I saw this, I think we would have been done. We might, we might have had a split. We would have had a split. We would have had a split. Look at these Jill's creeping old, ass drawings. Drawings of a character she Hell named nah. Pretzel Jack that they found in the basement. Jill elaborates that she had visited a circus and seen a contortionist, and inspired by him, she made her own contortionist clown character. Character. No, that's so discovered. creepy. Hey, shout out to Ninja. You won't be having to get any ads, man. You should be proud of yourself, Ninja. Which she would draw in the stories she wrote. The next day, the couple goes to the store to get supplies when Jill notices Tom talking to a woman, Sarah. And when they return home, okay. Jill confronts Tom about the woman and asks if he has had an intimate relationship with her. That's Tom, random. who introduces Sarah as a client, is baffled at the accusation and that, reminds her that he is not her father. That, that, that was random as hell. So he's talking to a woman. She's like, so you fucked her, huh? Deep strokes, huh? Had her pussy flooding and shit. Hmm. I see it over your face, all over your face. You're guilty. <laughs> who abandoned her after cheating on her mom. Damn. Later, they reconcile after apologizing for what they said to each other. It is then that a mysterious door appears in the basement, and the couple is freaked out by this inexplicable appearance. To settle their nerves, Tom calls a friend, Jason. You see how he calls the cock to open the door? Because he knows it's in his blood. It's in his DNA. He literally called the cock just to do it. That's insane, bro. Tom know what's up. Tom knows what's up. Who tries to open the door forcefully, but when nothing works, he brings out his shotgun and fires multiple shots, much to Tom and Jill's horror. He only stops when the power goes out, but it does the trick and the door opens. Inside, there is a stairway that leads to another door that has a handprint on it. What the hell? Jason is forbidden from using his gun again, and the three decide <laughs> to ask their neighbor if they could see his basement. They went to the other cock! Yo, these Negroes know what to do. They're going from cock to cock to find the answers. As they suspect that he might have created the passage to sneak into their house, but can't find anything suspicious in the neighbor's what? basement. And after apologizing, they leave. That's Over such a weird days, accusation. everything to open the door and even call help, but nothing can open that door. One day alone in the house, Jill goes to the basement after hearing some noise. She reaches the second door and I wouldn't on way, dare places her hand on the hand imprint. Which you're telling me the whole time they never put their hand on the hand imprint. I feel like I would have done that instinctively just because it's there. You know what I'm saying? Just instinctively. Man, they're idiots. They are, they are 100% idiots, idiotic buffoons. surprisingly opens the door she looks around and sees a terrifying clown that whips around and bends naturally before running past her jill immediately calls the police and tells them that the intruder was already inside the house but at that moment they can't do anything more than keep an eye on the house for the night jill has been in therapy to deal with her distrust of men because of the trauma she underwent in her childhood Oh, and yeah. now, Tom's meeting with a mystery woman makes Jill more suspicious of him. So she decides to place her trust on another man, Jason, who... That made no sense. The amount of, of sense that made 
Nada. Not a single, not a single bit. Suspicious of him. So she decides to place her trust on another man, Jason, who she asks for help and figure out what is going on in Tom's life and visits him. But their conversation soon changes into an argument when Jason blames Jill for letting her past shadow cast on her current relationship. Mm. Jill defends herself, but Jason doesn't stop there and gaslights Jill till the scary clown comes from the shadows and starts stabbing Jason till Jill screams for him to stop. The nigga got killed for a spitting facts? Message. Message, he got killed for speaking the truth. <laughs> that is insane. The murder soon comes to light, and the investigating officers question a shell-shocked Jill at her home as she is prime suspect in Jason's murder. But something the officer said strikes Jill, and that night, she goes to the basement to look at the drawing pad that has many drawings of Pretzel Jack. She can't unsee the uncanny resemblance between the character she created and the clown that fatally attacked Jason. Since then, she has been having flashbacks from her childhood about a mysterious door that was in the house she lived in or not. You were a haunted your whole life. And you never told your man Tom? Shit, I wouldn't have told Tom either because if, if, if Tom knew better, he would have left. I'm not trying to deal with your hauntings. Uh, figure that out yourself. Don't, don't get me dragged into all your getting haunted nonsense. She can't remember. So to put a rest to these recurring thoughts, she visits her childhood house and the new owner graciously welcomes her. Aww. While inside the house, Jill manages to sneak into her room, but she can't find the door she saw in her flashback. You really? I can see where a door might have been. Or it kind of looks like an eye. If you look at this hole in the wall as like an eye peeking at you, that's kind of creepy. You can also envision it as a vagina, too. So to cross-check if she missed it somehow, she sneaks inside the house once the owner has gone out to walk her cat. Jill walks into her old room and tears down the wallpaper that covers where she saw the door. And as she suspected, their vandalism is smaller than the one in her current house. She opens the door to find something peculiar inside that resembles a human vandalism, figure, but is too distorted to make out clearly. Jill is now convinced that Pretzel Jack has somehow come to life. And when she sees a glimpse of him in her bedroom, she screams for help. But when Tom checks and finds no one, he questions her sanity. Similarly, her <laughs> therapist doesn't show any interest in what she's saying and, Damn. much to her chagrin, recommends her medicines, making her leave the session. Damn. When nobody believes her, Jill turns to yet another man. Her another white man, may I say? <laughs> neighbor Ian who listens to her without judgment. Jill feels she can freely talk to him so she confides in Ian about Pretzel Jack and how she believes she created the entity that killed Jason. Ian seems to understand her and presents his notion of the contortionist, describing him as her protector and correlates his action to Jill getting angry at the people. Okay. He also confides in Jill and tells her that when he was a kid, he also drew himself a friend. A very tall character, aptly named the Tall Boy. On the other hand, Tom the has secrets boy. of his own, as he secretively gives Sarah's baby a toy at the park. And there's this mysterious woman with whom he occasionally meets and talks about Sarah and how much the baby looks like him. Who's Sarah? Is Sarah the white girl? Did he get Sarah pregnant? Okay, so it seems like... Sarah's the white girl, so that means that the black lady does have a reason to be upset. She does have a reason to be suspicious. That's what it looks like. Indicating that he might have fathered a child with her. These meetings are strange and unconventional therapy sessions take place in which the woman provides Tom with a sensory deprivation pool to take his mind off the recent events and all other things happening in his life. Okay. But it is weird that she has cameras installed in therapy rooms through which she keeps an eye on Tom without his knowledge. What the hell is going on? <laughs> she's about to she's about to dj that thing up <laughs> she about to dj that thing up golly meanwhile jill has just reached home after she met with ian when tom gets a call on his laptop 
Jill decides to take it since he's not home and is shocked to hear a child crying from the background and Sarah warning Tom not to come anywhere near her family again or she will call the cops on him. A furious Jill cannot believe her suspicions are coming true. All this while when she was made to feel she damn. is in the wrong. Damn, Back at the damn, anonymous damn. woman's maze. Of course they make the black man the bad guy. We just can't have shit. Of course. Like house, Pretzel Jack appears after Jill fails to control her anger and badly injures the woman, who tries to shoot him but to no avail. He then makes his way to Tom, attacking him with a knife and trying to drown him. Uh -huh. Tom fights back but gets stabbed in his chest while tackling the contortionist. Uh -huh. The badly injured woman has some strength left and she fires at Pretzel Jack, allowing Tom to run. But the shot doesn't do much damage and Pretzel Jack twists his body to appear like a spider, puts himself back on his feet and follows Tom. In the meantime, Tom gets himself in the woman. Of course the car don't work, because when does the car ever work when you're getting chased? I want push to start cars in mo horror movies. I'm getting tired of the key revving the car up is not turning on. I'm getting tired of that shit. Push to start from now on. Damn. It's car, but he doesn't know how to drive a stick. Because of this, he accidentally puts the car in reverse and gets ran by a van once he reaches the main road. Pretzel Jack sees the accident and decides to leave for now. Jill soon receives a call from the hospital about Tom and gets ready to leave when she hears some noise from downstairs and finds the front door open. She gets scared when all of a sudden, Ian walks in with a dog, explaining the dog had run out. She's relieved and so asks him to she stay with her until she heads to the hospital and Ian offers to drive her. At the hospital, Tom is not happy to see Ian with Jill, and sensing the awkwardness, Jill asks Ian to leave. The couple is then visited by the police, who show them the footage they recovered of the clown attacking Tom in the pool. They have also identified the mysterious woman, who turns out to be a doula, and they are curious to know how Tom knew her since she never advertised her therapy sessions anywhere. A doula. What does a doula know? Sarah's the other white girl that Tom has uh, impregnated. But what's a doula? Mm. When the police question him about Sarah, Tom doesn't disclose much. However, Tom is reminded of Jill's drawings of the clown contortionist and believes that a psychopath must have seen the drawings and made a mask to look like the character. He soon gets discharged from the hospital, and when they reach home, Tom asks Jill if she knows this person who is trying to harm them. Jill calmly states that he's me, and takes Tom to the door to show him the he's carcass me. of Pretzel Jack she picked up when she last visited her old house. It resembles a hollow scalded mannequin, and after Jill moved out from her old house, Pretzel Jack too ceased to exist. And you know what's crazy, bro? He can't break up with her now because that's going to make her mad and then he's going to die. He's fucked. He can't win. He can't get out. He is stuck. Man, that's garbage. She further explains that he has come back to protect her from getting hurt. It is difficult for Tom to wrap his head around Jill's story and questions her why Pretzel Jack tried to hurt him. Jill tells him she heard the baby when she answered Sarah's call and asks him to tell the truth. Tom finally confesses that he was involved with an already married Sarah, but he ended oh. it after he got together with Jill. Though he came to know later that Sarah was pregnant and was sure the kid was his, but- So he said it was before they got together. He said it was before. So if it's before, he may not be a terrible person, yes. Sarah didn't want her husband to know so she threatened Tom to stay away. Jill is beyond furious at such a betrayal and her mood alerts Pretzel Jack, who is sleeping under somebody's patio, uh -huh. and he soon puts his limbs in place before stomping to Jill's house. By the time he reaches the house, he sees Jill and Tom leave in their car. The couple has decided to visit Jill's psychiatrist for a couple's session to Yo. save their marriage, but it backfires because both men dismiss Jill and her story about her imaginary friend, enraging Jill. She tells them that Pretzel Jack is coming as the light flickers, but the doctor is confident nothing will happen. 
until Pretzel Jack crawls inside yep. through the window and kills the doctor in front of Jill and Tom. The couple dash out of the building. And you just knew it was gonna happen. You let it happen too. You did. You remember last time you said stop and he stopped, but you just let it. You just let it slide. You a crazy woman. And hop into Ian's truck, who is surprisingly waiting for them at the entrance. Pretzel Jack chases them for quite some time <laughs> before they lose him, and Tom looks at Jill in utter disbelief. They all go to Ian's home, and she asks for a method to destroy him, to which Ian paints a gruesome picture of destroying every part of Pretzel Jack to get rid of him, but also shares a different approach, which is to live with it and control it. Now that they know Pretzel Jack is real and- Would y'all destroy it or try to- Would y'all destroy them or try to control them? I destroy them. Because I know my emotions going to get the best of me one day. I already know. So I have to destroy him. My emotions going to get the best of me. And next thing you know, I'm going to be a serial killer. Oh, well, well, an assisting serial killer. I can't do it. I can't put that to my name. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm family friendly. So I can't, I can't harm my image like that. You know, I'm too family friendly for that. Jill's creation, Ian suggests they lure him out to trap him and then learn to control him. But for that, she will have to go through emotional turmoil. They sit in the empty room behind the dream door, and as Jill's feelings and emotions get skinned, Pretzel Jack's pace increases Look as he makes him. his way to their house. Creepy ass. Tom walks outside the room, but stops when he sees Pretzel Jack at the edge of the stairs. Just then, Jill's phone rings, and she picks it up to find it is her dad. Pretzel Jack suddenly charges towards Tom, but runs past him into the room where he sees Jill, who is now calm and performs some moves to impress her. <laughs> Jill, you you are crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. You like because you had to like this man so much that you had to like that clown at the circus so much that you made a you made him come to life. You literally liked it so much he formed into a being. You're crazy. Jill smiles as she looks at Pretzel Jack, and he takes her in an embrace, making her feel safe and happy. At that moment, Sarah's voice can be heard from upstairs, calling out to Tom. Tom quickly makes his way up and opens the door for her. Jill and Ian also head upstairs, but when Jill sees Sarah outside with Tom arguing, she loses her cool, enticing Pretzel Jack. What? You already got told the nonsense! What are you- You're cr No, okay, okay, okay. Tom's the asshole for not saying that the child could be hers. Yeah. She hugged a serial killing clown. And felt safe and enjoyed the embrace. Nothing's crazier than that. There's, uh, there's, there's nothing crazier than that. Back to go after Tom and Sarah. Sarah gets stabbed in her leg before Tom flees with her and Jill and Ian tail them. While trying to save themselves, Sarah and Tom also try to sort things out, and Tom finds out that the child is not his after Sarah got the DNA tests done. So to tell him that, she came to his house that evening. They enter a- Then why didn't you say that? There was no need to have that argument outside if you just said, oh yeah, the child's not yours. But you had to make some long, drawn-out story. And then y'all started yelling at each other. Nonsense, bro. Gymnasium. And Tom hides an injured Sarah in a room while he tries to lure away Pretzel Jack. Soon, a chase ensues, and they end up in the swimming pool area where Pretzel Jack tries Jill, to- Jill, why don't you Tom calm the again. fuck down? Ian and Jill also reach there, and Jill panics, seeing her husband in danger because of her imaginary friend. However, Ian tries to calm her down and asks her to concentrate on him so he can guide her to control Pretzel Jack. Once she gets control of Pretzel Jack, she frees Tom first, and then Took Ian you helps long her enough. crush her creation using her mind. And that ends up with Pretzel Jack exploding into white dust underwater. Simultaneously, Jill and Ian fall to the floor, oh, and Jill's easy? ear bleeds. They take Sarah to the hospital, where the situation gets awkward as no one talks to the other. So Sarah asks to have a moment alone with Jill, and tells her that Tom doesn't have an illegitimate child with her, putting an end to Jill's suspicions. Yet she doesn't feel at ease because Tom lied. Outside the room, Tom What did he lie about? 
or when he lied in the grocery store because he said something he probably lied about knowing her in the grocery store that's what it was that's probably what she's mad at Ian stand waiting but tom doesn't trust ian and wanders off to avoid being in his company but ends up meeting the detectives Meanwhile, Jill asks Ian to give her a ride, but tells him she doesn't want to go home and wishes to learn to control her mind. Ian takes her to his family's summer home, and a feeling of deja vu suddenly engulfs Jill as she enters the house. Ian prepares the bed for her, and once she's asleep, he goes through her phone, where her dad has left dozens of messages and calls asking her to meet him. What? After being grilled by the detectives at the hospital, Tom returns home, tired. He calls for Jill, but when no one answers, he reaches out for his phone and finds a message from Jill's dad, Bill, who sounds panicked and asks Tom to tell Jill to meet him as soon as possible as he has something very important to share about his family. I don't know what's happening. I have no clue. I'm just watching because I don't, I want to say something, but I don't know what to say because I'm trying to figure out what's happening, bro. I have no predictions. to a motel where Bill is drinking. When he hears a knock at his door, he rushes to find it is Ian, who addresses him as dad, indicating Jill is his half-sister. Oh. Okay, then there's nothing to worry about. Okay, Jill's his Okay. Interesting. Okay. Ian despises his dad and conjures tall boy, who gouges Bill's eyes, killing him. He did say he had the same thing going on growing up. So their genetic bloodline causes this? Instantly. Moments later, Tom reaches the address Bill had mentioned in his voicemail and sees Ian leaving the same motel. Tom goes into the motel looking for Bill, but the room Bill had mentioned is empty, as if he was never there. The next day, Ian starts training Jill and reveals he created her dog, which astonishes her. After finding her phone smell- He created her dog? So- Okay, so he's just been across the street stalking. Okay. She can't shake an inexplicable feeling and steps out of the house for some fresh air. Unbeknownst to her, Tallboy is keeping a vigil on her. Once back inside, she hears rustling from within a closet. She opens it to find a stuffed dog toy that looks exactly like she had when she was a little girl. Fear grips her immediately as she realizes something is very wrong. Yeah. But she composes herself before Ian and says she needs to go home. Back at the house, Tom spots his dog's twin that takes him into Ian's home. And after finding his dog's home, twin, Tom snoops in to find Jill's pictures what? and proof that reveals Ian is Jill's half brother. So how does Jill not know? I'm confused. Pause it, Waka, pause it, please. What's happening? <laughs> what? Ian and Jill return home and find Tom inside the house with all the pictures, and he confronts Ian about it. Jill suddenly remembers why the house looked familiar, because it was the same house where her dad had taken her and her mother a few times, yeah. and she had left her stuffed dog there. She puts the pieces together and is furious that he lied to her, but Ian wants her to understand he did everything for her and takes them to show Bill's corpse in his garage, but it is half chewed by hungry dogs that are Ian's creation. Why did this happen? Why did, why did she show him this? Why, what was the purpose? Why did, wh Horrified by what she has just witnessed, Jill steps back and yells at Ian to stay away from her and calls the cops. The cops and the detectives soon arrive and Ian confesses to killing his dad and also takes the blame for Jason's killing. He further states that he needed the condo he lives in to be near Jill, so he put what? the house owners to rest. Crazy. He is arrested and taken away by two detectives. Oh, he killed the house owners. Oh my God. As he is being transported, they get stuck behind a school bus and wait for it to move. Just as and he's calling waiting, tall boy. Tall boy comes from yep. behind, holding yep. drilling machines, and brutally kills the detectives. Yep. Jill and Tom reconcile after the time apart and realize how much they love each other. Tom steps out of the house to see Ian and standing on his porch. Why is he all blooded up like this? Why is why is this nigga here right now? Look at him. Insane covered in blood. Tom calls a cop who is at the neighboring crime scene, but to his horror, Ian makes Tallboy slay the cop. 
Tom tries to run inside, but Ian has already conjured a door behind Tom, through which a red hooded entity stares back. So this nigga just summoning things. He just summons. He's just like, if I think of it, it pops up. If I think of it, I want it, I get it. This is broken. He's overpowered. At Tom, Jill calls out to Tom, but he doesn't answer. So she goes out and finds the body of the cop and a message for her asking her to meet at the ghost neighborhood written by his blood. In the ghost neighborhood, Tom is seen being dragged by the tall boy into a building under construction and he stops near Ian who has just finished eating to keep up his strength. He confesses that he loves Jill in a pure, uncomplicated way and sees them being connected by the abilities they possess. Mu you love your half-sister? So this whole story turns into an incest story? This is painful. Much to Tom's disgust. But Tom doesn't stay longer to hear his nonsense and makes a run for it as soon as he gets a chance and finds him being pursued by the tall boy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jill arrives at the ghost neighborhood in search of Ian. Unbeknownst to her, the hooded entities are following her and when the security guard tries to stop her, those entities attack the security guard, what the stabbing fuck? him to death. Jill gets appalled and runs to hide from them, and Tallboy revving his drill nearby. She soon finds Tom, but after he forces himself onto her, she realizes it is not it's Tom, not Tom. Ian's creation with a psyche so yep. he can feel Jill. Upon realizing this, she flees, and Tom's doppelganger chases her till she impales him with a piece of fence. Just as the fake Tom breathes his last, is that man nutting out his stomach, out his belly button, just producing? Uh, this is such a strange situation to be nutting from. Or is Ian's in his original body nutting from feeling the sensation? I don't even understand. The real Tom comes, and to prove that he's real, he cuts himself with a nail, showing Jill his crimson blood. Jill finally breathes a sigh of relief and hugs Tom. It is the following day, and they step out in the open and soon get chased by Tom. <laughs> They hide in a house where Jill concentrates on conjuring Pretzel Jack while Tom distracts Tallboy. Just as Tallboy is about to attack her, Pretzel Jack appears and an epic this showdown nigga, between the imaginary. This is so nasty. This is so nasty. Look at this one on one. Of the siblings begins. Look at this epic in battle. In time, Pretzel Jack snatches Tallboy's drill and cuts his head in half, eliminating him. To put an end to their ordeal, Jill suggests they finish Ian. Ian knows what's coming next, so he runs and uses the last bits of his energy to revive Tallboy. He continues running, and the trio tails him into another abandoned <laughs> home. Jill finds this Ian in a room so with dozens of ugly. different This is so ugly. This story is ugly. It's interesting, though. I like it. It's just it's just ugly at the same time. Y'all feel what I'm getting? Lured rooms. Ian is not ready to give up on Jill and starts tackling her, which is witnessed by Pretzel Jack. But before he can rescue Jill... He is tall attacked boy. by the now revived tall boy who splits Pretzel Jack's body in half. Oh. Soon after, Tom reaches there and the couple stabs Ian in his heart. Tall boy runs towards them to stop them from it's too hurting late. his creator, but he it's accidentally too pierces Ian's body with <laughs> his brain as Jill and Tom jump out of the way. Ian suffers a lot before he dies, Look at leaving him. tall boy and all the doors vanish. Sometime later, we see Jill and Tom are parents to a beautiful baby who has inherited Jill's- Aw, they had sex a lot. They had a lot of sex. Man, that's how you end a great story, man. A lot of sex.